Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at ceramic capacitors and why once you've deployed them in your circuit, the capacitance value of those capacitors might not be what was specified in the datasheet. So this might be uh, already common knowledge to some of you, and obviously some of you may have never come across this phenomenon, but basically what happens is, once you've applied a DC voltage to a class 2 ceramic capacitor, the capacitance value will be less than what was originally specified in the datasheet. So this is particularly class 2 capacitors, so things like X7R, uh, Wi-Fi-V, those type of dielectric material ceramic capacitors. And what I've done is I've built up a little circuit so that we can have a look at the effect and how different ceramic capacitors are affected in a different way. Right, so here's our schematic for what I've implemented on the PCB. And basically we've got an RC oscillator uh, based around an op-amp. So we set our reference voltage 0 0.7 volts with this diode here. And then we've got an op-amp set up as a comparator. And as the output increases to 5 volts, then we start charging the capacitor. And then once we reach a threshold, then we set the output to 0 volts. And that starts discharging the capacitor. So we see a, a waveform of charging and discharging the capacitor. And the output looks like a square wave uh, pulse train. Then we've got a little bit of circuitry here which gives us a sawtooth um, and then a filter here which gives us an output that's proportional to the oscillation frequency. And that's what I've implemented on this PCB. And this PCB is one made by JLC PCB. And this is the first red PCB that I've had made and actually the um, solder mask is really good coverage on this particular board. Uh, but yeah, here's our bias voltage that we apply here. Um, these are our capacitors under test. Obviously, we only test one at a time, but I laid out a few different footprints. And then here's our DC output, which gives the proportional voltage based on what the capacitance value is. Right, so here's our circuit all connected up. And what we want to do is tweak the potentiometer so it reads one volt exactly. And so with zero bias, we're reading a value of one. So that means our 220 nanofarad capacitor is at 220 nanofarads. Now if we increase the bias to 5 volts, you can see that this has now dropped to about 0 0.74 volts. So that means our 220 nanofarad capacitor is now um, 162 nanofarads. And if we increase that to 10 volts, it's 0 0.45, so 220 times 0.45 we're at 99 nanofarads, and if we do it up to its maximum working voltage of 16 volts, we're at 0 0.3, so 220 times 0.3. Our 220 nanofarad capacitor is now only 66 nanofarads. So you can see that if you were to use this in your circuit and you were relying on that value specifically, then um, it wouldn't be behaving exactly as you intended. So what I've done is I've tested a whole range of different capacitors and then logged all of the results. First of all, we've got the Wi-Fi-V dielectric capacitors. They're all 50 volt, 100 nanofarad capacitors. The only difference here is the case sizes. But you can see here they all start off at their specified capacitance. But by the time they've reached their maximum working voltage, they're only at 20% of their original capacitance value. And one thing that you can note here is that the larger 1206 capacitor does drop very slightly less rapidly than the smaller 0603 capacitor. And then we've got the X7R dielectric capacitors, and I've tested a few parameters here, so different case sizes, different working voltages, and then different capacitance values. So these are all 100 nanofarads, except for these two 1 microfarad capacitors, and these both declined more rapidly than the lower capacitance capacitors uh, and also the lower working voltage capacitor declined more rapidly than the higher working voltage and that's illustrated more promptly here by the 200 volt capacitor which is declining significantly slower than all of the others. Then we've got basically the same story as before so as the capacitor size physical dimensions increase the decline in capacitance value is slower. And I did test that 200 volt capacitor all the way up to 150 volts, which is about as much as I could take it to. And you can see it follows exactly the same shape, and it sort of asymptotes towards the same sort of um, nominal value at the end of its working voltage. But if you did want to uh, use your 
capacitor at 50 volts, it might make more sense to use a 200 volt capacitor as opposed to something rated at 50 volts. And then just for completeness, I also tested a few different technologies of capacitors. So I've kept on this graph one of the Y5V capacitors, that's this one with the steepest slope. Then I've got the X7R. Then we've got an electrolytic in orange here, and that actually increased in capacitance with voltage. And then we've got three overlapping lines here, which are very stable across the band. And that is the class one ceramic, so a C0G or an MP0 ceramic capacitor. Those are excellent, but they're generally not available in higher capacitance values. Then we've got a Weimer MKS2 metallized polyester capacitor. That one was very stable. And then we've got a Panasonic polyester capacitor. And that Panasonic one was stable right up until its highest voltages here. Um, so at 100 volts, it had just started to tail off there. But the, the Weimer MKS2 was stable all the way up to its maximum working voltage. So what is it about the ceramic capacitors that causes the capacitance to decrease with DC bias applied to the capacitor plates? Well, the dielectric material within MLCC capacitors is derived from barium titanate, and as the voltage on these plates has increased, the molecular shape of the barium titanate molecule shifts, resulting in a polarity of the dipoles in the capacitor structure. So with no DC bias on these plates, all of these dipoles are free to rotate, and that gives us the highest capacitance because the dielectric constant is at its maximum. Once we apply a DC bias to these plates, some of the dipoles start to become locked in position and they're no longer free to move. That means that we've got a lower dielectric constant and therefore the capacitance is decreased. And as the DC bias voltage increases, more and more of these dipoles start to lock in place, resulting in a lower capacitance. This gives us some of the reasoning behind why we end up with these curves here. So first of all, for the high voltage capacitors like this 200 volt capacitor here, the dielectric material is much, much thicker than on the low voltage capacitors. So what we actually see is that the electric field between the two plates is lower because there's a greater distance and therefore less dipoles are affected when the bias voltage increases. That's also a similar effect to using smaller physical size capacitors. So when the physical size is smaller for a given capacitance and voltage, the actual dielectric layers are much thinner and therefore there's a much higher electric field so the dipoles become locked in place at much lower DC bias voltage. And similarly, for the higher value capacitors, so these one microfarad capacitors, in order to fit them into an 0805 component size, the layers are way thinner than they are for a 100 nanofarad capacitor and therefore the electric field is even greater in those meaning that um, the dielectric constant decreases much more rapidly as a result of the DC bias across the two plates. So there's a few things that you might want to consider when you're designing your circuit. The first is that it may make more sense to use multiple smaller value capacitors than one large one because you'll be further up the slope here uh, with your multiple smaller values in parallel. The next is that um, you should consider looking at using a higher voltage capacitor where possible. Um, you know, so even if your circuit's operating at 25 volts, it may make more sense to use a 200 volt capacitor um, just because it may get you further up the curve. And then finally, um, potentially the less desirable is that a physically larger capacitor will hold its value higher um, at a higher bias voltage. The downside to that is that very small ceramic capacitors are excellent for decoupling because they have such a low inductance. So by moving to a higher um, physical size, then the inductance will be increased and therefore you may have other effects. But there's a few trade-offs to be made there. And I would recommend that you potentially build up a little circuit like this. They don't always publish the data in the data sheets. I think the manufacturer TDK do have some very basic slopes in the data sheet for the ceramic capacitors, but obviously they don't really want people seeing that uh, their capacitor is not going to perform as expected. So if you design a little board like this, uh, then you can quickly test different types of capacitors and see what kind of result they're going to have if your circuit is that critical. So this would be particularly useful for things like switch mode power supplies where you're really relying on the capacitance value to keep your circuit stable. Um, so you might want to design something like this and then uh, give a few different types of capacitor a test. So I hope you found that useful.
uh, leave any comments or thoughts or your experiences down in the comments down below. But until next time, thanks for watching.